Hey, g'day. Let's just start with some stat winnings. These are how much I'm going to be valuing each stat when comparing gear. For Mutilate Lokes, Agility is our best stat, and I'm putting it at just under 2 strength. Agility and Strength will each give 1 attack power for Rogues, but Agility also gives approximately 0.1% crit per Agility. You'll also notice that Strength is 10% better than Attack Power, and the reason for that is because Blessing of Kings gives an extra 10% stats. You should have this even if you hoard through the new Aspect of the Lion, which is on Hunters. So, with that covered, let's go to the gear. First up, the Helm slot, and we're looking for Humbert's Helm. These are a 4% drop chance of Don Gork Riflemen in Hillsbrad Foothills, and they're only killable by the Horde. If you're Alliance, get one from the Neutral Auction House. Now unfortunately, there's not really any other good helm for us. You could get a Ringed Helm, or an Engineering Helm, but with no offensive stats, these aren't really what we're looking for. Hopefully, there will be something new that we haven't quite seen yet, otherwise it'll be all about getting that Helmet's Helm as soon as possible. Now for the amulet slot, we have something new. A high tide Troker drops from Baron Aquinas in the new updated Black Fathom Deep Shred, and it is our best in slot. For pre-raid, the best is the PvP Warsong Gulch Nex, which is Sentinel's Medallion for the Alliance, or Scout's Medallion for the Horde. A Spectral Necklace with Agility and Strength is also a solid option. Moving on to the shoulder slot. Our best in slot is the Mantle of Thieves from Razorfen Cruel Trash. It's BOE, but also pretty difficult to farm, so it will likely go for a lot of gold. If you can't find or afford it, there are some decent alternatives. Bristleback Amos is only a little bit worse, and it's a world drop BOE, so it should be much easier to get. Even easier, and again, only a little bit worse, is the Dark Leather Shoulders, which can be crafted by leather workers. There's not really any relevant quest rewards, but you should be able to get at least the Dark Leather Shoulders pretty easily. Let's look at cloaks now. There are three options that could be looked at as the best in slot. If you can get it, a parachute cloak is an excellent option, but is just barely on the border of what's possible. The pattern for it comes from either fishing boxes from really high level zones, or level 35 plus mobs. Then, the Shadow Silk to actually make it drops from spiders that are over level 35. So, while it's theoretically possible, it's going to be very difficult to get one. A more reasonable option is the Cape of the Brotherhood. This is a nice easy drop from Van Cleef in the Dead Mines. One other contender is the Wild Hunt Cloak, with 18 attack power when you're fighting beasts. This is a nice option to switch to whenever you're fighting some beasts. Then, there's a couple of alternatives to be on mind. A BOE green with agility and strength on it is decent, as is the glowing lizard scale cloak from Scum and Wailing Caverns. Both of these are just slightly worse than the Cape of the Brotherhood. Then, for quest rewards, Alliance is pretty miserable with their cloak of the People's Militia, which comes from red leather bandanas in Westfall, but Horde can at least get the Spritekin cloak from Blood Fury Bloodline, which is respectable enough. Chess slot. This is a bit of a funny one, where the best in slot is actually a quest reward for both Alliance and the Horde. So we really don't need any alternatives for the slot. The best for Alliance is the Tunic of Westfall from the Defiers Brotherhood in the Dead Mines, and for Horde, they can get a Panther Armor from the Den in Stone Talon Mountains. For the wrist slot, we're looking for a Jurassic Wrist Guards, so which is a drop from the Razor Moor Matriarch, which is a respawn in Wetlands. It's pretty out of the way, so if you're playing on release day and you're reasonably ahead of the curve, it's probably worth stopping by and checking the spawn as soon as you hit level 25. You might need to bring a friend or two though, because the mob is level 31, and also make sure you clear all of the raptors around her first. She does do a call for help at low HP, and that's going to aggro basically the entire universe when it happens. For some alternatives, you can get a BOE green with either 6 agility or 12 attack power, or you can get a wolf braces just from vendors. Horde can get a loam flake braces from the quest Protect Kanati Grey Cloud and Thousand Needles, and if you're Alliance, unfortunately no quest braces for you, but you can still grab a wolf braces or go for one of the other options. Now let's look at some weapons. 
For Mutilate, we do have to wear daggers, which limits our options a lot. Also, ideally we want slower daggers rather than faster daggers if we can manage it. Although all daggers will be reasonably fast. The absolute best dagger is the new level 25 PvP reward dagger from the Warsong Gulch Reputation. You'll get this by doing a lot of Ashen Vale PvP. Fortunately, you're a rogue. I'm assuming that if you rolled a rogue, it's because you enjoy PvP, it's kind of what they're known for. Then to go with that, a Meteor Shard from Archmage Aragul and Shadowfang Keep is nice. Mostly, it just has really nice high DPS and reasonably slow speed to get those big mutilates. For some alternatives, these are all available to both factions, but Alliance have a much easier job getting the first two. Prison Shank drops from the rare spawn Brugal Iron Knuckle in Stockades, which apparently is soulable by a level 25 rogue. I'll link the YouTube video, which is from another creator that I saw of it, down in the description. Once Season of Discovery does release, and I actually have a level 25 rogue to work with, I might see if I can get it nice and optimised and make a video of my own about it. Talon of Vultress is also nice, and it drops from Vultress and Westfall. Then, the chipped bite of Seracus drops from Seracus and Black Fathom Deeps. As for quest rewards, there are none. Like seriously, all of the daggers that come from quests are just awful. I'd literally use a white vendor dagger over any of them. So we move on to the range slot. Nice and easy. Ranger bow is the only relevant item, having one agility on it. We won't be firing our bow much, if ever. We really just want the stat stick. As for gloves, we have a new epic. The void touched leather gloves are a very nice piece with agility and hit, plus the use effect is a nice DPS boost, although of course you will need to be careful of the threat when you're using it. For some alternatives, wolf claw gloves are very nice, though as a razorfin cruel trash drop, they're likely to be as pricey as the mantle of thieves, which I mentioned earlier. Pathfinder gloves should be much cheaper, and they only lose a little bit of stam. Then, while toughened leather gloves really aren't quite as good, they're crafted, so they should be really cheap and easy to get, and they're also a component of the epic gloves, so you'll need a pair at some point anyway. Then for quest rewards, both of these are a fair step down, but Alliance can get the Hammer Fist gloves from the absent-minded prospector in Darkshore, and Horde can get a Gloves of the Moon from Cry of the Thunderhawk in the Barrens. Moving on to belts, our best option is Horde exclusive, the Deftkin Belt, which comes from Janu of the Earthen Ring. Alliance will have to settle for a BOE green, and preferably we'll be looking for agility and strength on it. For a couple of alternatives, Horde shouldn't need these, because the Deftkin Belt is really easy to get, but Alliance can get a Windborne Belt from High Perch Venom, which starts in Theramore, and it's completed in Thousand Needles. You could also get a Deviate Scale Belt, crafted by leatherworking. For the pants slot, what's best depends on whether Gnomerigan is going to be available. If it is, and if you're able to clear it at 25, you can get a trip run you can get a trip runner's dungarees from the quest to kill the final boss. He is level 34 though, so it might actually just be straight up too difficult. If Gnomerigan is in, but that boss is too difficult, petrol spill leggings come from the Gnomerigan trash which is much lower level, or if Nomogan just plain old isn't unlocked at level 25, then the BOE world drop, Trolls Bane Leggings, will be the best alternative. For some other alternatives, Leggings of the Fang is very good and drops off Lord Cobran and Wailing Caverns, and you can buy Stalking Pants off Fenders. I would probably focus on getting Stalking Pants at least, but for quest rewards, Alliance could get the smith's trousers from the ever still bridge quest in red ridge or horde can get greasy tinker pants from the escape which is in the barrens both of these quests are ones you'll likely just naturally do while leveling though then for boots the best option is feet of the lynx the boe world drop that said if you're horde you can get warsong boots which are really basically just as good and they're super easy to get from the warsong supplies quest in ashen vale then another decent option is just to get a BOE green with either agility or attack power on it. There's also a few quite easy to get options. These will really only be relevant for the Alliance, since Horde really should just be getting the Warsong boots. But Alliance can get 
either the Lancer boots for Mortality, Wanes and Razor Fen Krull, if you can get a group for that, or you can get Ambassador's boots from Crime and Punishment in the Stockades. Then even easier still are the Agile boots, which are sold by vendors. Now for rings, obviously you're going to need two of these, and the first one should be a Thunderbrow ring, which is just a BOE world drop, and then your second ring will want to be a Warsong Gulch Reputation PvP ring. That's going to be either Protector's Band if you're Alliance, or Legionnaire's Band if you're the Horde. For some alternatives, Alliance can get the very nice Seal of Rin from the quest chain beginning with Van Cleef's head from the Deadmines, or both factions can go for a 6 agility ring, either as a BOE green, or from the Monkey Ring, which is rewarded by Willix the Importer quest, which is in Razor Fan Crawl. Then, Horde have a couple of quest rewards that aren't all that amazing, but might serve as an okay backup if you can't get anything else. Band to the Fist comes from Allegiance to the Old Gods, a quest in Black Fathom Deeps, and Bounty Hunter's Ring comes from His Rule Bloodmark, which is a quest in the Barrens. You'll probably be doing this just naturally while you level. Finally, Trinkets. There's only one good option, which is the Avengers Void Pearl from Black Fathom Deeps. Then, for your second option, really just look for anything that does anything. For example, Rune of Duty from PvP has a few stamina on it at least. <laughs>